Well, Jake, I want to say first, thanks for sitting down with us, taking some time out. I know it's been a busy season back um, uh, in the Mort America. Um, I guess let's just start out. How would you say the season's gone so far? Um, has it been, how's the transition been getting back into the Mort America paddock from old Superbike and onto a BMW? Yeah, it's been, a, it's definitely been an interesting year. You know, I mean, first off, I'm, you know, I had an amazing year last year in World Superbike yep. and uh, traveling around the world racing motorcycles was, was amazing, you know, but it, it feels, it does feel nice to be back home, be back in Moto America. It's kind of like family, you know, I got a lot of friends around here and, yep. and all like that, I, you know, I'll get to be around home a lot more, you know, that, all that traveling can kind of wear you down. So it, uh, you know, and the stress level is a little bit lower around here. I feel a little more at home. Yep. I can have a little more fun just riding my motorcycle, but but yeah, it's been an interesting year for sure. I started off the year not too good. You know, I broke my leg pretty bad. It was actually the last day of the year, New Year's, and I uh, had surgery a week later, so early January, and uh, did my tib fib really bad and broke it into a couple pieces. And so, yeah, like I said, I had surgery early in January, and a uh, doctor told me, you know, it was gonna be a long one. I was non-weight bearing for three months, three whole months. I couldn't put any weight on it, and I was pretty much laid up. So I was pretty bored, and I was pretty bummed out, you know, especially after, that was about the time I knew, you know, we'd be uh, we'd be on this BMW, the Shabby Racing VP right, VP Lubricants Hayes Brakes BMW, and I. Uh, it, so yeah, and starting off the year wasn't that great, but again, you know, I'm, I was happy to be back and I was ready to get the season rolling. And but yeah, we we're definitely we we're definitely really far behind with my leg, and so we didn't really we did like one track day uh, right before Atlanta, and got through Atlanta, got through Texas, and it's, at that point I was still definitely in a lot of pain. I could only I pretty much only started walking two weeks before Atlanta, because okay. uh, you know, and, like I said, the doctor told me it was gonna be a long one, but you know how it is. I'm like, nah. You know, I'm young, I'll be fine, give me a couple months and but you know, I now I know it was it was a pretty serious one and it was just tough to get that thing healed in the spots that it was broken and right. um, but yeah, we made it to Atlanta, got through Atlanta okay. Uh, at Texas at Coda was going pretty good and then in that little warm up I hit a wet spot out of nowhere, kind of a weird little crash and threw me down. So I missed both of those races and took a good hit to my leg. So but luckily everything was still Everything was still in one piece. The metal, all the screws and everything was all good. So I just kind of banged it and swelled it up. And okay. It put me back, for sure, put me back a couple weeks, you know. But uh, again, we we made it out to VIR, had a, had a pretty decent weekend in VIR again. And um, yeah, here we are, Road America. So, uh, you know, it's still, still relatively early on in the year. You know, we got some time. And um, now that I'm starting to feel a little bit better and we have a little bit more time to gel with the team and work on this bike, uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know that the team has been amazing, and um, I'm, yeah, I'm glad they've been able to stick by my side through the tough stuff. And but we're we're starting to get some some progress here. I'm starting to learn what the bike wants and what I want from it. And but the BMW is a pleasure to ride. It's real fast, and uh, we're just kind of working it out. And we'll see how it goes here at Road America. But we're making progress every time, so we just got to keep it in laps. Cool, well, that's good. Uh, speaking of that, I know you guys are eventually. There's rumor you guys getting the new BMW at some point this year. Probably, I don't think this year. This yeah, year. I don't think so. I mean, it's it's, it's all mess up your you know development timeline with working on this bike and then having to start developing another bike. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, I'm sure we'd love to. We've heard amazing things about the new bike and the improvements that it could have in the areas that we want it, which is cool. But yeah, like you said, that requires a lot. Restarting everything on you know new parts testing and developing the bike because you know things are going to be different and um, So yeah, we'll you know, we'll see what happens. We'll keep our options open But uh, for now, we're just we're focused on Dallin in this last year's bike and making it more comfortable and making me more comfortable on it and, and it's taking it step by step Sure So kind of switch gears for a second here back to your world superbike here awesome year in world superbike I'm sure um, one particular thing I was curious about is you know, that opportunity you had to ride for Nicky Hayden after his passing, um, how did that experience go for you and like, what was that like? It, it obviously it was very, it was very surreal, you know, I mean, it was a terrible, terrible tragedy and um, to have it work out that way, that's not how I want it to work out, you know, but uh, I felt really fortunate and really grateful that, you know, somebody was going to have to fill in on that bike sooner or later and for it to, to happen at Laguna Seca, you know, home country, uh, home home cal you know California and that was my first ever world superbike race and so for for that to happen like that was kind of weird you know but at the same time it was I guess making the best out of a really really bad really tragic situation you know but I was really yeah because I was just a wild card one off one off race I was riding for Honda here at the time and we got talking and it, it worked out and I was like all right let's do it and uh, yeah we had a, I had a great first 
first weekend, first experience in World Superbike. I gelled with the team and we made some progress. I had a, I had a heck of a time. I had so much fun and um, it really, I was, it was really, really surreal. Even the whole weekend kind of coming from what I'd been to just kind of be right there on that bike was was pretty amazing so i try to try my best to do nikki proud you know and uh, i know he's always in our thoughts and still is and so um yeah i had an amazing time and it was kind of crazy that it you know i didn't know i had a go okay weekend i gelled and we were making progress and i wasn't kind of sure if they'd call me back and sure enough they called me back to do uh france magni cores later in that year and then the very last round of guitar so i was like you know right on i was pumped to to get out, race, race around the world, and experience new things, and I learned a lot. Through, even through those first couple, those first three races, those wild cards, I learned an amazing amount as a rider and a person, and how to go about being a world superbike racer, a racer in general. You know, so I learned a lot, and uh, I was definitely crossing my fingers, hoping that they'd call me back for to do a full time gig the next year. And sure enough, things aligned, and they called me back, and yeah, we did the ended up doing the full year last year, which was a you know again, it was an amazing year, and. I learned a lot. We made a lot of progress. I had some ups, some big downs for sure, um, but I, you know, I always took it in stride and I learned from it and uh, tried to make the most of every day. And um, even, you know, no doubt there was tough times and there were times where I was a little frustrated with myself. I made mistakes, but at the end of the day, I just tried to learn from it. Tried to always move forward and again, always stay, stay grateful for the situation that I was in. I was a very lucky guy, so uh, yeah, I had a ton of fun and. Yeah, we're back here and uh, I feel like I got a lot of more tools in the toolbox last year. I learned a lot and um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm pumped on, on that opportunity. And like you said, it was a horrible situation and, but to, to, for it to all happen like that, it was seriously, it was really surreal and it was very cool, so. Okay, so kind of crossing over between World Superbike and Moto America, I guess one thing I was curious, doing the full calendar, what would you say would be your favorite track that you got to experience over on World Superbike and then what would be one of your favorites over here in the Moto America calendar as well? Yeah, I, you know, I, I get that question all the time, especially I, after I, last I, year. Um, you know, but for sure, one of the ones I was just most looking forward to is Phillip Island, which was the first round. You know, I'd been watching that one on TV, oh, yeah. and you know, on there on the island, and just the layout of the track, it's so unique. There's nothing, there's really nothing at all like yeah. it. Um, so that's, I always say that was definitely one of my favorites, just how fast and flowing, and it's there on the island, and it's it's beautiful, and it's very cool. So I really love that one, and uh, I also really liked Imola in Italy. Yeah. You know, that was a really, really challenging, really tough kind of a tricky track and there's again there's nothing like that track you know it's those ones are a little different than the standard kind of european gp style tracks you know so i i really liked imola phillip island um i think those are those are the ones that stick out to me most right now yeah and then even here in the states you know like i said i've been racing all these tracks for years now and um i've always loved here road america i've always loved this track it's always been one of my favorites um as well as i've always really liked var you know all the i like and Sonoma, actually, I'd probably say Sonoma is one okay. of my favorites. I just love the the elevation. It's super challenging. Yeah. You don't get any chance to rest, and uh, yeah, the elevation and just you're you're nonstop, and it's it's tough to get a bike around there. So it's yeah. it's you know it's fun. I think that's what I enjoy. It kind of resembles almost like more of a you know almost kind of more. Of, I grew up racing motocross, so kind yeah. of more of a moto style with all the hills and you know sure. some bumps and everything's not so perfect, and yeah. that's what I like. So okay, cool. All right. So, growing up, who would, who were some of your favorite racers to watch growing up? Like, who kind of inspired you to get into road racing? I know you have some motocross background too, um, and some other sports, but as far as the road racing goes, how did that all come about? Road racing, for sure. Uh, Nikki Hayden, obviously, was was yeah. one of the big ones, no doubt. Especially, like I said, I grew up only racing motocross. I, you know, I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to road racing until. 2008 when I got picked for the Red Bull Rookies Cup and so obviously at that time it was like Nikki was the man watching him in GP and you know, it was just that American you know that American pride and it was cool to follow him and and not only that man he was just an incredible guy you know I remember the the couple of times that I met him even when I was little little guy in Red Bull Rookies Cup over there in Europe you know he'd always be there always want to talk he's really open really social I think everybody that's ever talked to the guy knows that he's not some of those guys can be a little rock star you know but he was always just down to earth and just a, a, a dude that loved racing motorcycles and made the most of it so that's no doubt the guy that I always looked up to and uh, and still do you know cool what's your time at right uh time seven okay i'm gonna keep you too long no no sir i got time seriously so we can i'm in no hurry now 
All right. Um, just click off a few more. So I guess. So how did you originally hear like get into road racing? Because I know you know Nikki Hayden obviously inspired you, but going from motocross, did did you have people that you know were kind of doing both, and that's how you kind of heard about road racing, or how did that kind of come about? Yeah, it was kind of a weird deal. Um, like I said. You know, Red Bull Rookies Cup was in 2008, so at the time, up until 2007, I was racing motocross. I was in 85s. Um, I was kind of riding for riding for KTM at the time, um, and I had just heard through. You know, my I don't even know. My dad heard about it, and he basically just said, "Hey, man, I signed you up for this thing." They everybody sent in resumes, you know, to the and it was a KT, Red Bull KTM program. Sure. Yep. So uh, we sent our resume in. I don't even think he told me that I sent, you know. <laughs> and that was the whole point of the program is to get some outsiders in, you know, some, okay. some, you know, maybe some moto guys, some flat tracker guys, just get some different type of, mm -hmm. some different type of talent into road racing here in the States. And that's exactly what they did. It was very cool. And, uh, but yeah, I ended up getting picked for the tryouts and they took 130, 140 of us kids back to Barber, Alabama, and did kind of a two day, tri three day tryout on uh, the Symmetra kit little road racers and that was the very first time i ever saw asphalt you know ever i mean ever rode on asphalt right. like literally the first time i ever rode on asphalt was yeah. there at the tryouts um so it was pretty it was pretty surreal for me i was no doubt one of the slowest kind of the slowest guys out there but i think most of those guys had some for sure some already experience even if it was just some super moto or some type of asphalt experience you know i'd never the, it was gp shift when they told me about that i was a little freaked out like shifting backwards and dragging my knee so yeah I mean, we ended up just wrangling some leathers and a helmet from a friend, or we heard about it, and but yeah, and my dad just said, "Hey, you know, we got picked. Let's, we're going to Barber. Like, we'll get some leathers, just try it out, have some fun." And uh, then I remember my dad got the call from Kevin Schwantz, said, "Like, hey, you're you know, you're one of the 23 kids, and so you got you know, you're on the program." And at the time, I was like, you know, I was stoked to try something different, try something. I enjoyed the the little bit of time I had on the on the road racer there, and. Regardless, I figured, you know, let's try it out for a year. I still was at home riding motocross, but I didn't race at all. I said, let's give it a shot, and things just clicked. I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, I just had some amazing opportunities rolling okay. from that. You know, the Red Bull Rookies Cup was really was the start of everything for me, you know. And yeah. uh, we did one here in the States. And like I said, I started off as one of the slowest kids, but then by the end of the year, you know, uh, we I think we got a couple wins. We were right there kind of in the hunt on the podium and stuff. So. Unfortunately, that didn't come back the next year in the States, which was a bummer, but they picked, uh, I guess, those top, uh, top three in the points of us Americans to, to go over and do the next year in Europe, which was cool, and so that was my second year road racing, and that went really good. And you know, it was just at that point, I was so new, so every weekend, every lap was a lot of progress, yeah. a lot of learning, um, and then so then I went back for a second year in Europe, and that was the year I, I won that Red Bull Rookie yep. Skip Championship. Was, that was pretty cool. It was pretty surreal, and so just kind of how those opportunities yeah. kind of steamrolled. Kind of upon themselves. Yeah, it was pretty cool, and something I couldn't, I couldn't say no to, and I didn't want to. Obviously, I mean, uh, I loved it. I really enjoyed it, and yeah. at the same time, I was at home, always riding motocross. It's just, it's part of what I do. It's part sure. of what I loved, and not only that, it's great training. And you know how it is. Like yeah, as a as a motorcycle guy, I'll, I'll ride anything, anything I enjoy. Two right. wheels and a motor, shoot, you know, I'll, I'll do it. So, right. um, yeah, it was just kind of crazy how those opportunities kind of rolled, and here we are, uh, eleven years later. Yeah, you I, was, know? I was gonna say, how old were you when you first did that? I would have been, I think I was thirteen and turning fourteen okay. during that year of two thousand eight, and okay. so we're yeah twenty nineteen now. So almost you know eleven years later, it's uh, time flies, you know. Cool. <laughs> All right, so. Getting into the racecraft a little bit more, how would you say you kind of mentally prepare for a race? You know, I know a lot of guys do um, for physical activity. You know, they'll, they'll train by doing bicycling or um, you know various physical activities. But as far as like mentally preparing for the race, did you have kind of a, a routine that you do or a regime that you go through? Obviously, you know things change over the years, and uh, but for me, I've always been, you know, like I say, I guess there's one end where you know there's some people like to you know, listen to some Metallica and just get pumped up or something. But I've always been one where I like to stay calm, uh, like to stay relaxed and just kind of, you know, it's just another day. Yep. I try to like treat it like another day. And uh, I feel like that's always been when I've been able to ride my best is when I can be calm and just be relaxed. So, I mean, my program even now, I just, you know, I'll get a little warm up in on my bicycle, get the blood flowing before, do a little bit of stretching before I get my leathers on and uh, and just kind of, you know, stay relaxed, talk with my team, go over the game plan, have a good plan of what we want to do and uh, just focus on, you know, my breathing and just 
trying to stay relatively calm, you know, nice. and then when I get out there, it's, you know, then it's time to go, yep. but, you know, yeah, I guess, you know, there's always different ways, but I've always been, I like to kind of stay calm, and I feel like that's when my, my brain works the best, and I can think about yeah. what I want to do rationally, and uh, so that's kind of my, my style. Yeah, the, the California relaxed summer style is hanging out, I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's what works for me. Okay, that's fine. We can just keep using this one. Um, what was that? Oh, so being a road racer, motocross, I know you've been road racing too. You've been lots of different series, lots of different tracks. How would you describe, like, saying your, I guess, strong points as, like, a racer? You know, some guys say that, you know, like, Thomas Sykes is one that likes to fire the bike in, get it fired out. He's really good on the brakes. You know, guys like Lorenzo are really smooth. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has kind of their own style. So I guess how would you kind of describe your, your style and kind of your strong points? I would say I'm kind of... I guess, and you know, with a background of motocross and all that, it's helps. I've been more of, I'm okay with letting the bike be a little bit looser and sliding around. And that's kind of when I feel most comfortable when I can kind of have a good, a better feeling of where that limit is with the front tire and with the rear tire. And, um, but that's kind of how, and granted, you know, sometimes that can get you into some trouble. And I've learned sometimes there's times where you got to, so you got to knock it back to 90% and things work out and you can smooth it out and that's how things click. But finding that kind of happy medium um, for me has always been, has been the kind of the key. But, you know, again, I, I guess more of a letting the bike slide around and using it, using it in different ways than just kind of being on rails. You know, I've like using the bike when it's out of line and slowing it down with both tires and, and things like that. So I've kind of, and I guess, like I said, growing up with moto and, you know, we see like a lot of dirt trackers, motocross guys, you know, that really helps having that background of being comfortable with the bike moving around a little bit and sliding around a little bit. And so that's kind of where I've always been, I think. Now I, so I do do some club racing, but I've never done motocross. Do you guys commonly use the rear brake? when you do motocross or no yeah definitely okay, yeah so every every do you do that with road racing too for sure yeah i could okay. say uh and grant you know every guy on a motocross bike is going to use the rear brake no okay. doubt every guy you see in motocross supercross and okay. but you know out here on road racers sometimes there's some guys that use the rear brake all the time there's some guys that kind of never really use it you know but i've always been one where uh i'm all over it it's just a, it's a yeah. tool that that you have on the motorcycle i feel like that that needs to be or can be used you know there's always benefits to it sure. and granted you know i know a lot of it isn't just slowing the bike down but as far as settling the bike down or you know getting the bike to the rear end to plan a little bit better i mean there's been times you know a couple of years ago when i was uh, in road race factory here in the states track like a sonoma we got all these hills you know like i said uh even when we had no wheelie control no traction control and stuff like that i was using i was blowing through rear brake rotors every session. I remember a couple of years ago at Sonoma, we went through, I think, 11 rear brake rotors in a weekend. Wow. Yeah, so I was, it didn't help because it was an early early development with that with that bike. But, uh, you know, you, we'd pull the rear, we'd, the bike, the rear, the rear brake would be so hot for using it for wheelie control and yep. using it for TC and obviously on the way into the turns that we pull the rear brake out and the, the, the rotor would just warp and just kind of turn into <laughs> like a bowl, you know? Oh, so, man. I mean, that's a good example of how, you know, sometimes the rear brake can really come in handy, sure. you know? That's cool. Yeah. Can't imagine seeing something like that. No. <laughs> Setting records out there. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Um, all right, just a couple more questions I got for you, Jake. Um, so after race weekend, how do you, do you have a routine too where you just kind of use something to kind of relax and wind down um, after a race weekend, whether it's gone, you know, good or bad, just kind of something in your routine that you kind of do? Um, you know, I think... And I guess over the years, as you get older, and uh, I've learned, and especially last year, you know, I had a lot of tough times last year, and I had a lot of good times too, but um, at the end of the day, no matter what happens throughout the weekend, on Sunday night, I'm always, uh, I always make sure I step back and, and just think about how lucky I am sure. to be in my position, whether I crashed out or had a, or just rode, you know, after I wasn't happy with myself and I didn't ride good, you know, granted, I'll, I'll be bummed out, or, you know, not even be bummed out, but I'll, just think about what I can do better, you know, and, and, and yeah, it's frustrating times, but no matter what, my goal is always wind down on Sunday and just be like, man, I'm, I'm a lucky guy. I get to race motorcycles. I'm here. And even if it's a bad weekend, I mean, how many, how many guys would love to be in that position? Right. And so that's always, and again, over the years, you know, you learn to, to not let it bug you, not be frustrated. And, you know, I'm again, just be happy that I'm, 
that I'm here, that I made it through healthy and and a lot and happy, and uh, and learn from it, move on, and you know go go home and go back to work and think think about what I can do better, you know. Cool. Qatar was cool. Um, obviously, my first time was uh, 2017 when I was doing the wild card, but it was a trip, you know. I mean, the country itself obviously was pretty was a, a whole different experience just getting there and. Um, you know, getting to the airport and seeing that city in the middle of the desert, you know, and just the amount of buildings and the amount of those hotels and it was pretty cool. And then you get to the track and, you know, we don't even start riding until nightfall, which has always been, that was a trip for me because yeah. I'm kind of like an early bird, you know, I'm, I'm in bed early and I'm up at 5 a.m. and that's kind of always, always, I've always been an early bird guy. So riding at night was just kind of a trip for me. Yeah. So getting used to sleep trying to you know we're, sometimes we leave, we were leaving the track at midnight 1 a.m and ch closing those windows in the hotel and sleep until you know sleep until 10 a.m or whatever and then we don't even go track go to the track till five o'clock so we go down and hang at the pool for a couple hours in the sun hang out with the riders and whatever you know and uh so that was kind of different and then when we got to the track being under the lights for the first time was really really weird for me the first year with that wild card you know, I and I there's a lot of stuff going on. I didn't even think about all I brought was dark visors. Oh, so I didn't even have anything sure. I didn't even have anything else. <laughs> so that was actually a little bit weird at first. You know, I would have liked, you know, when I came back when I went back last year, obviously I brought, you know, like a half tint visor. Yeah. Some guys run clears, you know, yeah. because it is it is there's lights, but it is pretty dark yeah. and uh so that was kind of a trip, the whole experience and um riding late at night, figuring out, okay, I might need some some lighter tint lighter tint visors you know um that was all kind of but it was cool you know it was a very cool experience but the, and that track is kind of weird because it's so flat it's honestly and there's nothing you can't see anything but lights and darkness it's kinda like, like reference points so it, yeah it's really tough to even and a lot of the terms kind of look the same so that first day even after a lot more laps than it takes a normal track it was tough to even remember what turn i was in you know because there's a couple right handers that get confusing so that was that was a little bit tough, and maybe maybe if I would have brought a lighter visor, I would have been able to see a little bit more. But granted, I you know I learned from it, and uh, the next year back was a lot easier. Yeah. You know, knowing the program, knowing this, you know, riding late, sleeping in, yep. bringing the equipment that I and needed, having, having the routine set in a little bit more. And okay, cool. uh, but yeah, that was it was an interesting experience, and then just being in that country was really really interesting. It was. Yeah. It was really, really cool though, you know, obviously seeing what they do over there and the hotels that we we're staying in and yeah. it's it's pretty cool, you know. Did you just live over there when you were so on la the calendar? So last year, uh, I ended up staying, you know, for a couple months at a time, I ended up renting a little a little spot, you know, Tenkate Racing was, they're based in Holland yep. outside of, you know, about an hour outside of Amsterdam. So uh, I ended up, a friend of a friend at the shop, I ended up renting a little, like a little granny flat in the backyard of, of a person and it was cool you know it was out it was out like on a farm they had like some horses some dogs some cats and like uh it, but it was nice it was actually good to kind of get away from the city and get away from the hustle and bustle and all the travel all year and so when i got to go back there i was kind of just nice and relaxed you know i had a bicycle did some did some bicycle riding some mountain biking hung out with the family that was there you know some kids and messed around and uh so that was fun and uh yeah obviously i got to see a lot of cool places uh last year but that was kind of my base and then obviously I, when we had some time i went all the way back to california to san diego to my home and then yeah. even if i had a little bit less time i'd go back to the east coast and my parents are based in virginia now so okay. i'd go go see them it was a little bit closer and but uh yeah it was cool i, I really enjoyed holland i liked spending my time there it was actually really uh the people were really cool and um it was a uh, it, it was definitely probably one of my favorite spots in europe I, for sure it's on my list of places to go yeah it's Par partly because i i want to go to an Aston race gp race at some point just because that's the only one that was on the original calendar that's still that Aston's the one you got to go to for sure. The fans are crazy; they're incredible, and the track is killer. That's obviously I, that's definitely on the list of one of my favorite tracks over there. Even in Rookies Cup, that was one of that was my favorite track when I was riding okay. one two fives, just because of the flowing atmosphere. Yeah. And I think I got my first win there, and so that was kind of special memories. for me. Yeah, and, uh, but it's a cool track. The fans there are crazy, and so yeah, you gotta definitely gotta check that one out. And it's cool because you can kind of see. The spectating is really great there, so you can kind of see a lot of stuff going on, and uh, so yeah, definitely gotta check that one out. Cool. Yeah. Well, sweet. I think we got her. Right on. Well, Jake, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, 
let us sit down and go through some questions with you. Wish you the best of luck in the rest of the season. We'll be keeping tabs on you, keep in touch. So thank you. Right on. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Sweet.